Hey everybody, what's going on? I am tired of sitting around. I'm going for a walk in the woods. Let's see what we can find. Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Zabowski Studio. I'm Bruce Zabowski. Thanks for joining me today. We're taking a walk in the woods over here next town over Oakland, Maine. Just wanted to get outdoors. Tired of being cooped up in the house with everything going on in the world right now with this COVID-19. But we're going to poke around in the woods and see if we can find something to paint. I'll definitely have to uh, push the color because it's very gray out here right now. And uh, my plan is to use a limited palette. So uh, let's start the journey. And if you're new to the channel, watching for the first time, thanks for checking it out. I hope you like it. If you do, hit the subscribe button. Now these woods we're getting ready to walk into. Uh, one of my paintings in the uh, painting critique series two videos ago. It, one of the paintings I painted the uh, sun dappled woods, I think it was called, with a little stump on the right hand side of it, six by eight. That was painted in these woods. Let's uh, continue on, see what we can find. Also, I want to take a second and let everyone know that towards the end of the video, um, I'm going to make a little announcement, and it has to do with uh, showing my appreciation for you guys out there that watch my channel. So stay tuned for that, and it'll be towards the end. Pretty nice out. It's about uh, 47 degrees. Touch on chilly side, as you can tell by my jacket. Little update, I just want to let everyone know job wise. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows from uh, another video ago, I was unemployed but got an interview, seemed to go well. Waiting to hear back, so wish me luck. Uh, mother in law is back home from the nursing home, so that's a good thing, and uh, still has a lot of recouping to do rehab at the house. But it's a start, and hope for sunnier days. So let's continue on. These are such really cool woods. I've actually practiced some uh, little bushcraft skills in the woods, setting up a tarp, a little tarp shelter and all that sort of thing, just to have some fun. But through the trees here on the left, there's an old woolen mill and uh, caught fire years ago. And you can actually have access there's a little road that travels along there and I've been by there to look at some of the urban debris kind of thing There's a really cool building that has some graffiti in it. That would be neat to paint somehow been working on some ideas for that, but Lighting is important Very cool stuff over there Now a little recommended gear pretty obvious uh, You know, I'm not wearing it right now, but I do have a little net cap in my bag with some lightweight running gloves they're actually gloves that was sold in the hunting department of walmart and i like those better because they have a little bit of grip on the palm i assume because when you're handling firearms you want you want to feel the stock of the rifle that kind of thing they are camouflage but hey you know whatever um it's going to be better tactile sensation when you're holding your brushes and stuff so i do have that in my bag in case when i'm standing still once I get set up somewhere, if I find something, that will help facilitate uh, being able to grip things. So I'd like to hear from all my viewers out there. What have you guys been doing during this quarantine? And let me know. There's probably different people in different parts of the world. I think mostly in the United States. But have you been painting or have you been feeling stressed out and anxiety about the whole thing? and having a hard time concentrating with work. So I'd love to hear what your solutions are in this time of crisis on how you deal with your art. There's another channel I watch, a podcast. He talks about sometimes watching too much news and it just kind of flattens them out emotionally. It's hard to do any work, so maybe I need to take his advice and turn off the news and just do what I'm doing right now, go out in the woods.
Okay, we're coming up on the area where I painted the sun dappled woods in my painting critique video and it's pan down here. Oh, it's down there by the water. Actually, we're going to walk down here because this area over here is really cool to do a little bushcraft, set up a tarp, shelter, hammock, and just hang out for a while because the trail is up here. And when you get down to the water, if you have the proper tone of tarp, a uh, sort of a or a screen or something it'd be hard to detect what's going on but not that I'm doing anything terrible or anything just painting and hanging out so let's check it out okay here's my here's my view behind me and over there is where you see the stump that's where I painted that painting While I'm setting up, I just want to show you, I'm going to plug my GoPro in and just use these little power banks. I keep one in my backpack. You can buy bigger ones, and I do have some bigger ones, and uh, they're very useful. I'm just going to top off the power so I can continue, uh, continue filming. And uh, I got the little cord for it here, and it doesn't take up much space. I gotta say, this is my favorite uh, plain air box. Uh, I have several laying around the studio, but this is by far the best. I like mostly that you can carry your panels in the lid, and uh, I'll be going over the palette color names in a moment. Okay, here's the uh, scene I'm gonna be painting. Just some little tree trunks, a little bit of sky breaking through, nothing major. I do as much of the painting as I can with these three brushes from left to right. A, oh, I hope I can read it. Let's see. Cheap Joe's a flat, size 10, size 6, flat and around. Rosemary, size 6. So we're going to try that and see what we get into. And then I'm just going to be down and dirty. And I have my palette, which is going to be titanium white, ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, and pyrene red. I'll put those colors in the description box. But uh, let's get started. So the first thing I decided was that when I came out here, my only goal was to use a limited palette and to paint as quickly as I could with really getting some application of paint on there and have a little activity on the surface. I was not after a detailed rendering. So I think the first goal would be to pick your idea for your painting and it will give you some guidelines as to how to go about uh, working out the subject on your painting surface. And I think it's good practice to do that sometimes when you go out to paint. Like I also decided to use those three brushes that I mentioned in the beginning, bristle brushes. I knew on the uh, smooth panel that the, you would see the strokes of paint and you would have some uh, uh, interest in the paint stroke because of the stiff bristles. And uh, that was the whole concept also to add to the texture of the woods. And I just thought it was... Uh, very enjoyable to do that. Normally I have a, I still have a whole range of brushes in my kit and also in the kit like even though I used a limited palette I do carry multiples of the uh, primary colors and decide on site what palette I may use. And I like the idea with this palette because it was uh, all if you, most people think of them as cool colors. The Cad Yellow Light, Ultramarine Blue and the red is kind of like a very cool red some viewers have expressed wanting to see me mixing the paint on the palette and then applying it. So that's why I'm adding some of these clips like this. I still will in the future be experimenting with an inset with uh, showing the palette as I reach down to mix. A little more difficult for me for the editing process a bit, trying to coordinate everything. But here I'm applying some thicker, reestablishing some darks to get in the dark tree trunks to offset those light tones I'll be building on. And 
I'm just planting strokes and putting it down there. You don't want to noodle around too much. Just make a decision and paint. I'm really not trying to look at every particular detail in the scene. I just want to the feeling of the woods and uh, get that feeling of chaotic movement and action that you see in the woods. Okay, I'm actually kind of enjoying uh, slapping some paint on there. It's really not super impasto or anything, but I really want to try to work on that and not have too thin a paint. Uh, my board is very smooth, and I think to facilitate the impasto effect, I think if I textured my panel a little bit, and uh, of course I didn't work too much, uh, obviously, from a toned surface. I just jumped right in on a white panel, and... Uh, that's always something you can adjust and try different things, but I'm liking the limited palette because you got enough to look at with the scene without having to think too much about 20 colors laid out. And over time, you can get used to that, but it's also to facilitate not carrying too much in your kit. And uh, while I'm taking a little break here, I want to show you uh, how I got my little system set up here. And you've seen my Gorilla Box probably in the past in other videos, but uh, let me show you some things. Okay, to start, we can see what I'm painting on here. This is just one of my old panels, and I've attached this little piece of hardware. I don't even know what it's called. I've had it laying around the garage, and that's a little ledge for the panel to sit on. This is like a panel insert that Gorilla Painter sells for their boxes, but I kind of just made my own. And how you can see it extends over the height of the Gorilla Box. And the reason I did this was to... Sorry, just block, trying to block the wind a little bit from the microphone. But I tried to raise this up a bit as a starting point for uh, panels. So I'm not too down against the bottom here, which I've had in the past. And this facilitates doing bigger panels. And I have a little bungee cord. Along the back side here. Sorry for the wind noise if there is some. And I've attached a D-ring there to attach a bungee cord. And this will stretch and hold like a 14 by 18, 16 by 20. And it works out pretty well so far. Pretty happy with it. So let's get back to some painting. So that modifications on these paint boxes are so easy to do. And there's no sense buying like that insert because it's so easy to make one. And there's probably a way you can add a little magnetic band in the center and have that bracket that's holding up the panel be adjustable. But typically for the size I work on site, this should work out just fine. This is its maiden voyage and, and it worked really well. I was really happy with it. And I definitely suggest trying that out. Now we're just doing a little showing you how I apply. Got a little paint on the brush and working some of those limbs off of the tree trunks. And you get a nice effect when you have that kind of lighter tone, obviously, against darks. It really starts to pop. Now, as you can see with the little bits of sunlight that has been poking through that uh, today, you know, with on that tree right there, really adds a little interest. And it's a little different, obviously, color with the more warmer tones. Adds variety to the tree trunks. And I like the little horizontal uh, deadwood laying on the ground really adds some interest, too. Some cross... Uh, sort of lines in the composition. Now we're just going to try to get some effects of like the weed grass kind of uh, sticking up here and there. I got the paint thickish and damp with a little bit of turp. I had some uh, liquid on here too and I'm using a touch of that. I didn't use a whole lot of liquid during this painting process because I really wanted to just use the paint uh, again, it's back to basics and try to avoid and for speed to just paint with the uh, oilness in the paint already uh, is the plan. Doesn't mean you, you can't, it's just something to try out. So let's try here. Ready? Just a few little sprigs. Just to suggest a little bit of uh, forest floor field debris, especially against light, uh, dark areas, light against dark. Like over here. Let's see. A 
just keep going back to your paint. Don't uh, play around with the paint too much. Now I'm going to finish up this little sketch with just a few minor little details with a finer detail brush just to bring out a few little elements or try to. That's my plan. Um, the goal was to come out here and just get it done super quick. Take a walk in the woods and not try to think too much but just paint. I am going to try to get a little more impasto in some sky areas and then uh, we'll call it a wrap. There's some nice little thin and if you don't have the equipment to do it, like I really think I should have a smaller brush for those, so I'm not going to fiddle around too much. There's a few little marks on the tree here. The knots where the limbs have broken off. You don't have to get too fussy, but... You know what? I think that makes enough of a statement for me. Um, I'm going to, like I said, work on a little of the sky here. and. I'm going to go ahead and use this smaller brush to have a touch more control to try to dance around some leaf shapes, bring those out a little bit. That's the plan. A couple tree trunks by painting negative shape around them carefully to suggest that there's bunches of tree trunks. Just don't do a straight line and try not to make the tree trunks the same width like I did there. Add a little interest and I'm just wiping off on a paper towel. I'm not cleaning my brush with turpentine because you don't want to have the paint running. And the only thing I'm going to do is just darken up this obvious blue tree trunk so it's not as stand out as much. Okay, that's it. Okay, I uh, finished up the painting here. And so getting out today was just what I needed, even though it's not bright, sunny, warm weather. I, you know, with this quarantine thing going on, all this COVID-19, I just couldn't stand it. I had to get out there in nature. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. Let's take a look. Okay, let's do a little uh, far away look and go in. I'm really kind of happy with how this came out. It's totally, when you get up close, very abstract. So I want to do something special with this video. And what I'm going to do is the first 20 comments that I get, up to 20 comments that I get to say they want this painting and leave a comment what you like about the painting and then message me that you want it with your email. I'm going to do a drawing and that person that I select is going to get this painting for $150. Normally this size painting, if I have it in gallery setting, is like $600. So I just think it's something special to give the people that kind of uh, take a look at my, my videos and really support the channel uh, an opportunity to uh, buy something that they saw produced on, on the video and uh, just kind of occurred to me during this session out in the woods and it's something that uh, in the future I'd like to try to do every now and then so uh, if you're interested leave a comment what you like about the painting and then saying you want it and message me with your email then I'll do a video and do a drawing and let the people know uh, you know let everyone know who won so that's that and uh, let's move on and uh, head back home okay i'm all packed up ready to head back to the car so let's go so like i said if you're interested just uh email me and we'll go from there if you're again a new subscriber watching for the first time thank you for checking out hope you enjoyed it it was really a fun fun day in the woods and uh if you do subscribe hit that notification icon be alerted as to when you post new videos and i do believe now you have to be sure to uh, set up the menu in there to say see all posts otherwise you won't see all the posts some algorithm thing with youtube and for everyone else if you still want to help out with the channel it takes a little time to make these videos 
um, you can click on the link down below in the description on PayPal donation button. And uh, until the next video, bye.